Okay, so we're moving on to our vertical hot pass with 7018. We've got a 6010 root in here. Took the grinder, smoothed it off. Some places won't let you use a grinder, a lot of places will. A grinder and a wire wheel. Wire wheel is going to be your best friend when you're welding 6010. Take that grinder and you just smooth out that middle portion that's going to be kind of fat. You're going to have a little bit of a fat bead right up the middle. And then on the edges, you're going to have a little bit of slag on both sides of this. You're going to want to take that grinding rock and you're going to want to feather it out to the point where you can get those edges with slag entrapment very, very thin to where when you go over it with the 7018, you are going to burn that slag out of there. If you have really deep pockets, chances are you're not going to get the slag out. And if you're doing a bend test, you might have a chance of getting a little crack where you've got some slag inclusion. If you're doing x-ray, depending on the severity of the code, sometimes you'll be all right, sometimes you will not, depending on how big that pocket is inside. So our basic method here, we're going to fire up at the bottom, get this good and hot. We're going to, just a little bit before the very bottom portion of this, fire up with about half an inch to go, get that rod warm, go down to the bottom, and then we're just going to barely oscillate. Do like a little figure eight motion. We're going to hold our heat on our edges of our bevels over here much more than we stay in the middle. And if you keep all your heat right in the middle of this root pass, chances are you're going to blow a hole through the backside and or you're not going to get good tie-in on both sides of this bevel edge. So I'm running about 90 amps with the 7018. This is 332 rod. It is, uh, I like running 332 more than 1 8 preferably unless I'm loving something really, really big, then 1 8 is fine. You can carry a little bit more heat with 1 8 um, this 332, got my machine set to 90 amps. We're gonna fire up a little bit of a hot pass and we'll get you guys on there, show you what it looks like. Fire up a little bit ahead of where you wanna take off. Okay, 90 amps is a little warm. You guys can see that glowing on the back side there. I like to kind of push my 332 718 to its limits. Anything over about 95 amps, you get a, about three inches of rod left and it starts to kind of glow red and droop on you if you're not careful. So depending on your machine output, 90 and 95 is sometimes about as hot as you can get those 332 rods. I have machines that run a little bit colder. Sometimes you can squeeze 100 amps out of them before they start to really sag about halfway down the rod. All right, guys, this is what we're going to be working with right here. Uh, apparently my file is missing. All I was doing, let me get a rod here and I'll show you. My motion, I didn't do so much figure eight. It was more of left and right. I was shooting over, grabbing this bevel coming over grabbing this bevel and every time I move I just ever so slightly angle up in my travel so just running that uphill gonna go right side slightly ahead left side and then you gain a little bit of height every time you take a step and guys that's the hot pass right there and guys if you have a hot pass and you have a little bit of undercut on your inside edges as long as you don't have a bunch of slag entrapment it's okay to have a little bit of undercut on these pieces until your cap pass. If you have undercut on fill passes, it's not a huge deal unless you're just severely gouging it out. Why? Because the next pass is gonna be run right here in that corner. Like I said, if it's not too terribly deep, that's not that big of a deal because your next pass is gonna fill all that in and chances are you're gonna have less undercut on your next pass as you did this one. You're walking this a little bit wide with that 7018, and the chance of having undercut in here is higher, in my opinion, than any other time. I always tend to have just a little bit. Um, this one's actually a little bit worse. You can see down here, there's not any undercut here. I was probably a little bit more smooth with my steps. And then up here towards the top, as that rod was getting shorter and shorter, getting a little bit hotter, I started to accumulate a little bit of undercut. But like I was saying, those are perfectly fine on the hot pass because they're going to get filled in and all that slag that could be in there, you can get it out with a wire wheel or just even a brush very easily, and then you don't have to worry about any of that for your fill passes because it's all gonna go away. So now that moves us on to a vertical tie-in with the 7018 on our hot pass. You can see the 6010 root down below. I'm gonna hit this with a wire wheel before we fire up on it again to get any of those little bits of slag out of there. But for this tie-in, it can off vertically. We're going to fire up a little bit ahead and we're going to move this quickly. You can drag this down in a quick motion to get this rod fired up. And as soon as it starts to burn clean, you want it to burn clean pretty close to where you're gonna be taking off. Fire up here, burn clean. You're gonna come and you're gonna swoop and then you're gonna take off. You don't wanna swoop down in all the way to this edge right here. Cause if you do that, you're gonna have a fat spot. You wanna swoop just 
a hair above where your maximum thickness is on that hot pass. If you come all the way down, it's going to get really fat. If you come to, or if you don't come down far enough, you're going to have a big gap right there, and it's it's just not going to be a good tie-in. So come down, swoop, leave about oh I don't know an eighth, maybe a maybe three sixteenths of an inch from the highest point on your previous pass. So right in there is about the stopping point because gravity is going to pull some of that material down and help that tie-in look a little bit better. I'll show you. Okay, and here you have a perfect example from that tie-in that we were just talking about, uh, whether it was in this video or a previous video posted, depending on what the time frame was here. So I talked about swooping down and just barely tying into that. Well, as you can see, I just barely didn't swoop down enough, in my opinion. Now this will pass. This is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. But if it were to be perfect, I would have needed to come down just a little bit more. And you can see that little groove right there. When I came in and dipped down in, I stepped just a little bit above where I should have taken off. Other than that, this little bit of undercut that you see on these sides, that ain't no big deal. Those fill passes are going to take care of this. Don't get too discouraged on your hot pass. If you're not blowing through your root pass and you don't have slag inclusions or slag entrapment, it's not that big of a deal. You have to understand that these fill passes, they are going to take out any of that undercut. You can turn your heat down or up just a little bit and you can get that slag to burn out and you can run these beads to the left side and the right side of this hot pass. Chances are you're going to be just fine.